Hi guys, uh, moving on to a new topic. This is the straight line. We're going to look at a, a vast majority of uh, elements of this topic and it's a really, really important topic, particularly when you're going into um, higher uh, and further education. In the short term though, we're going to focus on um, the first piece of information that you're going to need to know about and that's the gradient. Um, we will go into some complex calculations for gradient but in the first instance just a quick summary of the fourth level um, gradient work that you will have seen probably earlier in the school year. Now the gradient in simple terms is just the how steep a line is okay now working left to right if um, we have a line that's moving left to right in an upward direction we know that that's a positive gradient likewise if we have a line that's going left to right and it's going downward, sorry, then that is a negative gradient. Um, now, how steep that line is, is what we're going to look at next, okay, and, and how we calculate the gradient of that line uh, in numerical terms. Okay, there are two elements that uh, contribute to the gradient of a line or how steep a line is, and that one, first one is a vertical distance okay and the second one h is the horizontal distance and that's what we're going to have a quick look at so in other words if we are creating a line a b with a positive gradient because it's moving upwards from left to right then we have two elements that contribute here along the bottom is the h, the horizontal, and up and down is the vertical distance. And those are the two elements that contribute when calculating gradient. And in fact, it's a change to those elements and the changes when moving from A to B, it's the change in the horizontal distance and the vertical distance that will in fact calculate the gradient. Um, and what do I mean by change? Okay, well, we'll have a look at what it is I'm talking about when I, when I mention a change in that gradient. So if we look at that A and A to B line again, positive direction, and if I was to change how steep this line would be, I want you to think about how I would have to move from A. So if I was to change my position of starting at A and made it a little closer to the B along the horizontal scale, then that creates a steeper line. Now, what, what I mean by that is I have now in the horizontal scale that we mentioned before in this direction, I have made this little distance in here shorter. Now, by changing the horizontal distance, I created a far steeper line and therefore a greater gradient. Now, I can create a smaller gradient in the same way if I change the vertical distance. So if I stick with A as it is, but decide that my B is going to be slightly lower, then I think you can see there that the distance I would have traveled on the vertical, the up and down, okay, so this distance here is a lot smaller, and which that and that means that I have reduced this distance here and therefore created a line that is less steep or in mathematical terms has a smaller gradient okay now those things are difficult to see for some people when we're doing it um, by way of a diagram and um, some of you will find this easier to understand some of you will find the formula that will approach um, in, a, in a few slides time uh, and you'll you'll find one will be more helpful than the other but if we're patient and we take our time and remember that the two elements that are going to contribute to the gradient of a line are the vertical distances and the horizontal distances, or more specifically, the change in the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, then we'll be in a stronger position to tackle this topic. Okay, now that we've got a, a simple, uh, basic understanding of what the gradient means, um, we're going to look at the formula that we're going to use, or the formula A. We'll move on to uh, some more complex ones. So for the time being, um, what we've, we've mentioned before now in this formula, which is really important just to get the beginnings, um, 
of this topic. The gradient of a straight line, first of all, is represented by the letter M. And we've mentioned before, it's the change in the vertical height and the change in the horizontal distance or the vertical distance and horizontal distance. So ultimately what we're looking at is the formula M equals V over H. So we can go through these very quickly, but to do that, we need to identify the vertical distances and the horizontal distances. So first of all, if we have a look at the red line here, so we'll call that number one, the blue line number two, green number three, and the pink stroke purple number four. So what are the vertical and what are the horizontal distances? So first of all, the horizontal distance here is this little green line. So it starts there ends there how far have we traveled that's two boxes okay the horizontal line marked in red that's one two three boxes so if we were to look at number one and we're going to ask what's the gradient of that red line we would have m equals v over h and v is the vertical distance which is three h is the horizontal distance which is two so the gradient of line one is three over two if we have a look at number two this time the horizontal distance we're going to start here and end here so where have we gone horizontally we've gone across there from zero to four so we can see that distance is going to be four what vertically now up and down we've gone from zero to three so that is three. If we were to look at the formula, gradient equals V over H. The vertical distance is again three. This time the horizontal distance is four. So the gradient of the line number two, blue line, is three over four. Now we can go through them very quickly for the next uh, two examples. If we just take the horizontal distance here, one, two, three, four, five, and the vertical distance, one, two, three. Once again, we've got three as the vertical, five as the horizontal. So for line three, we've got V over H, three over five. If we look at number four, one, two, three, four, five, six. This time on the vertical, we've got one, two. Now this is a good one to look at, question three. Largely because we are, uh, sorry, question four, largely because we've got numbers that are divisible by each other. So M equals V over H, we have the vertical distance was two, horizontal distance we said was six. So this is a fraction at any point in maths, generally we would simplify a fraction. So instead of having the gradient as two over three, we can divide the top by two, that gives us one, the bottom by two, it gives us three. So the gradient for line four is one third. And that's an important point because we need to understand that gradients can be fractions, gradients can be whole numbers. If this was a situation where we had a number that was a top, numbers that create a top heavy fraction, it may be that they will reduce to a single whole number. Okay, so those questions are relatively straightforward in uh, the sense that we have boxes to count up if we had for example a and b and we wanted to try and calculate the gradient then we're in a fortunate position where we can count the number of boxes and access our vertical and horizontal distances but like i've mentioned before we're very rarely going to see something as straightforward as that and it may, may well be that you have a similar situation and rather than have the boxes you have your coordinates, in which case you have to think about the vertical and horizontal change individually. Let's say, for example, we have our points A and B, and we're looking to find the gradient of the points, um, between, or, the, or the line, sorry, between A and B. Okay, so we need to find the gradient of the line that moves from A to B. We'd be looking to use the formula, M equals V over h but how do we find first of all this vertical distance and then second of all 
this horizontal distance. Now, our understanding of coordinates would be essential here. So if we know that this doesn't start at the origin, it starts at the x coordinate two. And the next point, B, which is where we would be moving to for our straight line, the x coordinate is five. And what's the difference or the change in the horizontal movement? So the horizontal distance. The change is two to five, and that's a difference of three. When we say difference in math, so it's important to remember that that's a takeaway. So we're looking at the difference between five and two. Five take away two would give us our three. So the vertical distance is three. In the same way, we have the horizontal distance it starts at two and ends at eight. What's the difference between those two? Eight take away two is six, or there's a change of six. So three over six. And we mentioned this before because we have numbers that can be divided by the same uh, common factor. So we've got three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two. So the gradient of that line AB, and this is important part, you might see some subscript with M A B. Okay, maybe a little bit close for that, but if we had M, we might have a, a kind of capital in italics A B, and that means the gradient of the line from A to B. Okay, the gradient of this line, we didn't have boxes to count, but we could work out the gradient looking at the coordinates.